Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I want to talk about two, three things. Number one, I want to talk about how Muslims are being set up. How Muslims are being set up. So let us look at this example of David Wood. David Wood is this person, Muhammad Hijab. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless this brother. He debated this, uh, you know, Christian apologetic a Christian, you know, Muslim hater. Uh, this guy hates Islam. Okay, Muhammad Hijab debated him, and it was called the end of his career. The end of his career. Now, I think David Wood has said some career-ending, embarrassing statements today. I mean, to be honest with you. After 20 years of researching Islam, you come with this. Okay, let's deal with one, one by one. That career that uh, Brother Muhammad Hijab destroyed, utterly destroyed David Wood in that debate. And uh, now David Wood has had a revival. He has revived himself. And so let's watch on what basis has he revived himself. And this will tell you that how Muslims are being set up. And uh, then we will take it from there. Now watch this. Some of his supporters took to the streets to celebrate the verdict. But the fear now is that the decision will sow the seeds of acrimony between Christians and Muslims with the conversion of a magnificent unifying symbol into a potentially divisive one. Am I upset? Not one bit. Look on the bright side. Muslims will never again be able to pretend that they respect other religions. Muslims will never again get to complain that we're disrespecting their religion or their book or their prophet. Think about it. Islam's holiest sites were taken from other religions. The Kaaba was a pagan shrine surrounded by pagan idols. Muslims conquered Mecca, smashed the idols to pieces, and made it the heart of Islamic worship. The heart of Jewish worship for 3,000 years has been the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. After conquering the city, Muslims built the Dome of the Rock and the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Jews have to pray at a nearby wall. For centuries, the heart of the Christian world was Constantinople, and the heart of Christian worship was Hagia Sophia, one of the most spectacular buildings ever constructed. The building was dedicated to the holy wisdom of God. But holy wisdom of God here isn't referring to God's wisdom in some generic sense. In 1 Corinthians 1.24, the Apostle Paul calls Jesus the power of God and the wisdom of God. They named the church Hagia Sophia in honor of Jesus, the wisdom of God. Muslims conquered the city and converted the church into a mosque. And now they've converted it into a mosque once again. So Muslims pray and worship at places that were centers of worship for Christians, Jews, and pagans. They treated Hindus the same way. Muslims constantly demand respect for their religion when they offer no respect in return. Every Islamic prayer in Hagia Sophia is a slap in the face to Christians. Every Islamic prayer in the Al-Aqsa Mosque is a slap in the face to Jews. To you Muslims who are watching, I'll say this. After 14 centuries of seizing other people's places of worship while shouting Allahu Akbar, you have lost the right to demand respect for your religion. Don't come complaining to me next month when season two of Muhammad's Boom Boom Room starts. So now, the point here is obviously he's completely wrong about Mecca. Because Mecca was originally the house of Ibrahim, and then it became a pagan place. And then Prophet Muhammad wasallam returned it back to its original state. Just like a, if Ardugan was really real and really acting Islamically, he would have said, this is your church, take this church back, unless you want us to keep it, okay? But, you know, I'm not even even talking about that right now. I want to talk about something else. The doors that have, of fitan that have opened up against Islam now, 
Islamophobia will go on a new rise and you will see many people confused about what type of religion is this that allows these things. Because as you were listening to this idiot David Wood talk, you're like, okay, I think he has a point. And let's start with the point of Al-Aqsa because they say where Al-Aqsa is, is where their temple should be. Because that's where the temple was, and the temple was there, and then Al-Aqsa came there, and now there was a church there, and now there's a mosque there, you see, and that this is the teachings of Islam that we're presenting to the world. So the Orthodox Christians are mad, and Islamophobia, all these missionaries are now going to go to Muslims and say, hey, see, we told you you're intolerant, you know, we told you you're... You know, you're not, you want respect, but you did the same, you're doing the same thing that you are trying to blame us with. And so we've given them, whether you like it or not, whether you agree with my argument or not, we have given them, the non-Muslims, a lot of ammunition against us. Now, the reason I'm talking about this is not to talk about Hagia Sophia, really, but today the first thing I want to talk about is that what is the real stance as far as Al-Aqsa is concerned? Because this is another big misconception even Muslims have. And they think that, yeah, the temp because the, Christ the Jews, because there was a rabbi, I'm not going to go into the detail of that today, but I'm going to show you part of it. There was a rabbi, he had a dream. In the dream, because they had lost their temple, they don't know where their temple is. Okay, They didn't know where their temple is, they had an idea of where the location of the temple is. They had no idea where their temple is, so this rabbi who does magic has this dream that, oh, that masjid, where the prophet went to Miraj, that is where our temple was. And this is how they found their temple. Let me even show it to you from a biblical perspective of what Jesus said. Let me show it to you from the perspective of what history says that the real place of the temple was what's called the city of David, not where the masjid is. If you understand that Umar did not pray in the, in the church, why? Because he feared they would change it into a church. He feared Muslims would do this. And he was right. Because he is one of those people that the Prophet said وسلم, about him that he is, you know, he is mulhim. He has like a, you know, he has the, he, he's, he has like a, not a wahi, but he has ilham from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And a lot of times Umar would have an opinion, Abu Bakr and Umar would have a different opinion, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would side with Umar. Okay? So, this happened in the case of what to do with the uh, prisoners of war. This happened in many cases where Umar had one opinion, Abu Bakr and Umar, they were lenient, they had another opinion, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sided with the opinion of Umar radiallahu anh. And that Umar, who the Prophet said about him, that he has ilham, he says, I was, I'm, he's afraid Muslims would turn churches into masjids. So he prayed outside the masjid. He prayed outside the masjid, so this would not happen. This mistake would not be made. Okay? And so, what happens? Umar radiallahu anh prays outside, and later on they made a masjid Umar Farooq. There's a difference of opinion if he actually prayed in the place where they made that masjid Umar, uh, masjid Umar, or if he prayed on the other side of that place. Anyway, besides that, when Umar did this, and he doesn't do anything except shaitan, you know, he's the one who shaitan runs away from him. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala built a synagogue for the Jews, okay, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, put, uh, put a masjid there and brought the Prophet there so that it would become a masjid? No. You see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't contradict himself. The place of the worship of the Jews, of their third temple, is in a different place. And the place where Muslims pray today in Al-Aqsa is a different place. Now, please, hold on and watch. Okay? Temple Mount and the exact location of the first and the second temples. Now, this is what you see on a lot of picture postcards. This is what you see, the Dome of the Rock there, bang smack in the center of, as you can see, the Temple Mount, which is in the center of Jerusalem. Now, when I say recently, I'm talking 
first of all, probably in the 1990s and then a lot more recently in 2014, there was some literature that, that came out, some books had come out uh, from some people who'd basically challenged that and said, no, that is not where the first and second temples were built. And of course, the repercussions of that is, if that is not where the first and the second temples were built, well, does that need to go before the third temple is built? We've got the expert on hand. I'm absolutely thrilled to see. I've been trying to get this gentleman to tackle the subject just because he's very, very busy for so long now. And I'm thrilled to be doing it this evening. Uh, Derek, it's brilliant to have you here. Great to be here. Right? From Oxford Bible Church, we are thrilled because this is something that we have been speaking about, you know, over over the months, certainly, and, and probably a lot more recently in the recent visit to Israel, Israel and more importantly right. actually been on the temple, the temple and kind of brought it all forward. Yes. In fact, we weren't even really going to be talking about this this, this evening, but I guess you know, it really is relevant for anybody out there. Though we're going to be doing more than more of a, a kind of presentation really as to what is this all about, and then of course do send your text, your emails in. We'll give you details how to do that, and we can ask Derek any. Look at the uh, picture that's coming on the screen now. And basically, what we've discovered is that the city of David, that's the original city that David captured, is in the bottom part of the, the picture. And that's where the Pool of Siloam is there at the bottom. And then, of course, the classic view is, of course, that the temple is at the top of the picture there, where the Dome of the Rock is. That's where the Temple Mount is, on the higher ground above the city of David. But the, the, the new theory, you might call it, which... Uh, Ernest Martin was the originator of, and then the, it's been popularized recently by Bob Cornuke, is that that's not the case at all. And in fact, where the temple was, if we see the picture one more time, the pe temple was roughly halfway up that picture. In other words, at the, the, the northern part of the city of David. And so it was actually in the city of David, and near the Gihon Spring. And uh, that... Uh, might sound like a bit of an academic uh, uh, discussion, but actually I believe it has a lot of ramifications to it. Well, you know, let's continue this because for it to be on Speaker's Corner, this is, you know, we talk about subjects that are close to people's heart that they feel are important. This isn't purely an academic exercise for you, Derek, is it? No, I believe it has great importance. Uh, I, we'll see the next picture, and um, this will actually, uh, this is my favorite pictures to make it clear again you'll see on the left hand side is the city of David and then the middle area is called the Ophel and then it goes up to the peak and this shows actually the whole area at the time of David and at the peak there is where the, the traditional temple mount is I, I want to just point out also that the spring fortification if you can see that in the city of David just jutting out from the side is the uh, is they found recently some very strong a fortress around the spring it's called the Jebusite fortress and it's uh, also we know it was from the Jebusites and that's actually how David captured the city through getting in through the waterworks yeah. that's why Jerusalem was there it's on low ground all the mountains of Jerusalem surround that but the city of David itself is on relatively low ground and um, why was it built there? It's because of the Gihon Spring, and that's in the centre of our discussion today. But to answer your question, uh, by the Gihon Spring is important because, you know, when they go to the masjid, they need a wudu place. And in the, the, the way the people did wudu back then is they would immerse their entire bodies in the water. Okay? And they would need the water to wash the animals that they sacrificed, because it was like a hajj place, okay? Where you had your kind of like water for ghusl and you had your water where you needed to clean the animals after sacrificing them just like there's sacrificial there's animal sacrifice in hajj also so they kind of had all the same uh, rulings uh, of, of their law and so the real place and, and I'll make this uh, very clear just from the beginning the Al-Aqsa Mosque is on the top and the very Quran is very clear about this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran uh, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran in ayah number 7 
of Sutul Bani Israel or Sutul Isra talks about the destruction of their temple. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلِيُتَبِّرُوا مَعَلَوْ تَتْبِيرًا That what you saw, what happened is, uh, it was utter destruction, utter destruction. وَلِيُتَبِّرُوا مَعَلَوْ And this, you know, the, the, the fort of the Romans was actually above where Masjid Aqsa is today. The fort of the Romans was above their temple. And they came from the fort above and came down. And this is why these words are so appropriate. وَلِيُتَبِّرُوا مَعَلَوْ تَتْبِيرًا And they came down destroying. Okay? Because uh, they uh, they had taken over total... You know when the Quran uses the same word twice. إِنَّا فَتَحْنَا لَكَ فَتْحَمْ مُبِينًا For example. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you a clear victory. And the same word... Uh, Safan Safa, right? When the same word is used twice, it is to emphasize that in one go, in one turn, boom, it happened. Okay? So, وَلِيُتَبِّرُوا مَعَلَوْ تَتْبِيرًا In one go, they, it was completely decimated. Okay? So, Masjid Al-Aqsa is not where the former synagogue, the third temple was. So, just keep this in mind. So we know it was from the Jebusites, and that's actually how David captured the city through getting in through the waterworks. Yeah. And that's why Jerusalem was there. It's on low ground. All the mountains of Jerusalem surround that. But the city of David itself is on relatively low ground. And um, why was it built there? It's because of the Gihon Spring, and that's in the center of our discussion today. But to answer your question, and by the way, there's two immediate problems you might think about. One is the temple was on the city of David is it's not really a mount like the temple mount is. The Bible talks about Mount Moriah. Now I know you're going to come back to this but just to support um, I think if, if we're, we're seeing what the main argument is, the main, the main argument here is that these are writers um, and authors that have said no, it's not where the we see the Dome of the Rock today is down in the city of David. Just very quickly before you move on, so what is the Dome of the Rock? What are they saying is the Dome of the Rock? What well, is, what well it's, a, it's a Muslim. Um, but but what are the likes of, the of Bob Kurnoke and... I don't uh, know what they, they actually, I believe they actually, um, they explain that is because you know, that's, it's a rather large area and they actually believe that's it. The whole area is the Antonio Fortress. Oh, sorry, yes. Yes, sorry. Yes. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah. They, they, so just to yeah. explain, they think that the temple was down, right. the city of David, and what we see is the Dome of the Rock. They're saying that's the, the whole that area. Whole huge that temple whole platform huge area is, is the Antonio Fortress. The Roman so, just so you're clear, they're, all, they're both saying in their discussion that the area where Masjid Al-Aqsa is where the Roman fortress was. Okay, This is something that should be a very easy buy-in for Christians because Jesus said, not one stone, not one stone of the temple will remain. This is what Jesus said. And so you have this great wailing wall that a magician rabbi discovered, which I'm going to talk about one day, that that, that was part of their fortress. That was never part of the... The temple was, as the Quran says, and as the Bible says, that it was... It was completely destroyed. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, here in his sunnah, and Umar in his sunnah, okay, and the Prophet have made very clear that not to make, not to make something over a holy, uh, holy place... And if you do, then there are conditions, which I'm going to talk about only one of them today if I get a chance. We'll see how far we go. Yeah, yeah, okay. That's right. Yeah. And, um, and we'll see this theory a bit later on. Um, and so one problem, another problem is that the, temp, the si size of the temple as given by the Jewish records, it just doesn't fit on the city of David. But let's, we'll go to the, the facts of the matter in, in a bit. But why is it important? I believe that it's actually part of the spiritual warfare that's going on right now. I, I am a believer that God hasn't finished with Israel and that Jesus is returning, for example, to Jerusalem, to the Mount of Olives. So the Christian concern is that if we don't build a temple in the right place, therefore Jesus won't come back. So th th it's important to them to have the right place. 
Okay, now let's move. So this picture, if you can take a look at it, the fortress is where the big, um, the fortress is where the big, um, this fortress that's the first part is where Masjid Aqsa is. Then you move down, 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 and then you come to the site of the actual temple. Okay, this is one of the versions, but that is where the temple was. This fits better with what Umar bin Khattab said because he said it had been turned into a garbage site. And this is where even till today is the garbage site. Okay, even though people have discovered uh, its walls and so on and so forth, but Masjid Aqsa is not where Muslims, where Muslim, where, uh, where the Dome of the Rock is or where Masjid Aqsa is. The temple is actually south of that. Okay, and so this needs to be uh, clear. So, again, this is another view. So the Fort of Anatolia, where it says Fort of Anatolia, that is where Masjid Aqsa is. And this over here, it, this place where it says the triple gates and the double gates, this is where the temple is. Okay, this was the actual location of Solomon's original platform wall. Okay, so this is uh, because they needed to be near water. If you know anything about Jewish law, you need a lot of water. Okay, so uh, dating back 2,700 spot. So behind us, Eric, we can hear the actual water flowing from the Yihong Spring. The Yihong Spring is the spring that is the only spring where you can do wudu or, or sacrificial lamb in that whole area. Okay, because Al-Aqsa, as you know, is on top of a mount. Okay, so the water was on the bottom. So the temple was on the bottom because you needed that. Thousands of years ago, flowing into Hezekiah's tunnel, dating back 2,700 years. And where we're standing right now is a place that allows us in so many different ways to take the archaeology and show that what's written in the Bible is, in fact, true. First, we have the story. It's in the book of Kings, in the book of Isaiah, when Sennacherib comes in the 7th century BCE to besiege Jerusalem. The Assyrian king. The Assyrian king. He's already exiled the kingdom of Israel, the ten lost tribes, their god. Now Hezekiah knows that the kingdom of Judah is next. And so he says, as it says in the Bible, why should the Assyrians come and find water? And so what does Hezekiah do? He reboots the water to flow inside the walls of the city so that when the Assyrians come, they will not find the water. He undergoes an engineering project of four years to excavate the tunnel that is behind us, 530 meters. Now, that sounds like an amazing story. Except in the late 1800s, an Arab boy finds this inscription in the middle of the tunnel. It's known as the Siloam inscription. And it recounts the two teams of diggers, one from each side of the tunnel, at the moment where they met and they celebrated, saying, Oh my God, we actually did it. Without GPS, without radar, they were able to engineer a almost 2,000 foot long tunnel. This is kind of a biblical high five. Absolutely, a yeah. biblical high five. Now, what else? The whole story then what happens, the Assyrians come, Sennacherib comes, besieges Jerusalem. It was the mightiest army of the time. Isaiah comes to Hezekiah, Hezekiah doesn't know what to do, and Isaiah says to him, by the way they came, so shall they return. Not a single arrow will fall within the walls of Jerusalem. And then, the next morning everyone wakes up and the Assyrian army has disappeared. Now it's almost too good to be true, except that in Iraq was discovered this prison, known as Taylor's prison, which is the account of Sennacherib himself of when he comes to Jerusalem. And it says that he traps Hezekiah like a bird in a cage. And he leaves him there, and he has to go back to Nineveh to deal with political instability. So you have here Sennacherib confirming the biblical account that they came to Jerusalem, but they left Hezekiah and the Jewish people in Jerusalem. It's so amazing that the tunnel is still here and the water is still flowing. Absolutely, still flowing. And to put the cherry uh, on top, the icing on the cake, just two months ago, Eric, where we're standing, just a few feet from where we are right now, the Dr. Mazar, the archaeologist from the Hebrew University, she discovers this seal. This seal bears the name of a biblical official that you and everyone watching at home right now has for sure heard of. The name on the seal is Hezekiah, son of Ahaz, king of Judah. The 
Bible is real and Jerusalem is really the eternal capital of the Jewish people. And Zeb, you're giving us a great history lesson. Much more coming out with Zeb Ornstein from the City of David. This is an amazing place, folks, and there's more. So stick around after the break. It's The Watchman only on TBN. Don't move. So now, uh, you know, obviously uh, not everything that they say is 100%, but the point is there is a lot more archaeological evidence that... Uh, the temple, the third temple, was south of where Al-Aqsa is. And the point of saying this is, is that the uh, this kind of like uh, thing that people are building or is so, slowly being built up, that, oh, well, Muslims, you did this, you did this to the church, you turned a church into a masjid, and, you know, you turned, uh, you turned our synagogue into a masjid. Well, no, the answer is, the prophet did not pray in the 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 temple he did not pray when you read the narrations of the mi'raj it doesn't say anywhere he prayed in the temple uh, rather he prayed on top on the side of that area where al-aqsa is today or where uh, the um, the dome of the rock is today on the mount of the temple mount that's where he prayed and your temple was actually south of that and that's what the evidence points to but because they want the magical powers of the of the prophet going to Miraj. And so they are going to insist, no, this is where it is. They're going to insist. And the thing is, is that where did they get the idea that this is where their temple is? It, it was a dream that one of their rabbis had, which I'll be talking about one of these days when I get that uh, when I get that on my screen, inshallah. Okay. So now, what is my uh, next point here, which is uh, important, is that um, if you read any of the fiqhi books, any of the fiqhi books on this, even if you take the idea that, you know, if Muslims conquer, if you take the idea that if Muslims conquer a land, then they can turn the churches into uh, masjids, well, those fiqhi books give us a process and a way to do that, and that is that you have to drop the masjid. In fact, there is an interesting narration of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that uh, not only all the, the, the fiqhi books, but also uh, you will find in the narrations of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where he talks about uh, this type of situation, which I'm going to read to you one of uh, those uh, narrations, inshallah. Um, so, the Prophet ﷺ. Okay, so uh, we went out as a delegation to the Prophet ﷺ. This is a Christian group saying this, okay? Peace be upon him. We gave him our oath of allegiance and prayed with him. We told him that in our land there was a church that belonged to us. We asked him to give us the leftovers of his purification, meaning the leftovers of his wudu. So he called for water, performed wudu on it, rinsed out his mouth, and then he poured it into the vessel and he said to us, Leave. And when you return to your land, demolish your church and sprinkle the water on that place and take it as a masjid. Meaning, demolish the church. If, like, let's say a place, there's a place, and this is the 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 one of the exceptions that if you if there's a place where a majority of the people became Muslim. Now you have churches there; they're they're not going to do anything. What do you have to do? You have to bring down the church and rebuild the masjid. Every fiqhi book says this. If for any reason you were to take a place of worship, you have to, uh, like as a masjid for some reason, because of whatever, the general rule is you don't do this. But if you had to do this, here is an exception. Okay, The exception is that if you have to do this, because the general rule is the one in Sutul Hajj, which I'll, I can go over. But this is the exception. The exception is that there was a village that all became Muslim, so now what do they do? So now leave and when you return to your land, demolish your church and sprinkle water in that place and take it as a masjid. Okay, we said our land is far away and it is very hot and the water is far away and it is very hot. The water will dry up. He added, add more water to it for that it will only make it better. So after we left and when we came to our land, we demolished the church and then we sprinkled the water on the place and took it as a masjid and we called the adhan on it the monk was a man from Thay, 
And when he heard the adhan, he said, it is a true call. And when he, he then he headed toward one of the hills and we never saw him again. So there are exceptions like this, right? But to by for, using force, you know, لا يريدون, uh, لا يريدون في الأرض. Those people who don't desire to show uh, or highness and greatness on earth. And this is the difference between Islamism and Muslimism. You could say, you know, if you want to be Muslimism, you could say, okay, we're going to take your church, even though we don't need it, and we have enough church uh, masjids around us, but we're going to still convert it into a masjid because we can and we have the power to do so, right? Then tomorrow, they're going to do the same thing with your masjid, Masjid Al-Aqsa. They will try to convert it into a masjid and they have every plans to convert it into a masjid, okay? Now, uh, so let me now, uh, again, uh, just for the sake of, of, of being thorough, let me go over. Allah says, الَّذِي بَعْدْ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ الَّذِي أُخْرِجُوا مِنْ دِيَارِهِمْ بِغَيْرِ حَقٍ Those who have been kicked out of their houses for no just cause. And this is the result of when you will by force convert masjids, people will have to leave. الَّذِي أُخْرِجُوا مِنْ دِيَارِهِمْ بِغَيْرِ حَقٍ إِلَّا أَنْ يَقُولُوا رَبُّنَا اللَّهِ Only because they believed in Allah. وَلَوْ لَا دَفَلْنَا نَاسَ بَعْدَهُمْ بِبَعْدِ You read the tafsir of Imam Tabari. You read the sayings of Imam Ibn Qayyim. You take up any major tafsir and see what they have said about this part of the of this ayah. In fact, I'm going to do a whole session on this. وَلَوْ لَا دَفُوا اللَّهِ النَّاسَ بَعْدَهُمْ بِبَعْدِ If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not put pitch one group or push one group against another group, right? لَحُدِّمَتْ صَوَامِئٌ وَبَيْءٌ وَصَلَوَاتٌ The monasteries, the churches, and the synagogues وَمَسَاجِدُ يَذْكُرُوا فِيهَا اسْمَ اللَّهِ And the masjids in which they remember the name of Allah kathira. Okay? They would be what? Demolished. Meaning, what? Imam Niqayyim said it is the obligation of Muslims and the contract, the treaty contract the Prophet had with the Christians specifically states even if their 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 synagogues or their churches, meaning in this case it was the the, the Najran Christians, the, the Prophet had it in the contract, if your churches become bad, we will repair it for you. Okay? Then you will know who are the true helpers of Allah by this. Those who bring down places of worship, they're not the helpers of Allah. But those people who protect, who protect, who protect the worship places of others and themselves, they are the people who are help, helping in the cause of Allah. And Allah will surely help those who help his cause. وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَقَوِيٌّ عَزِيزٌ Indeed, Allah is قَوِي. Allah is قَوِي. Allah is قَوِي. And He is Aziz. And He is the one who has power. And He is the one He is the one who has authority. So let's not be of those people who destroy and who are okay with destroying the churches and the monasteries and the synagogues and the masjids. Uh, and, you know, of course, the masjids, everyone will agree with, with the Muslims will. Uh, ha have with this uh, what we did with Ayah Sophia have a problem with uh, accepting the fact that this type of attitude is wrong. Now if somebody, now remember the most important point is now if somebody's serious about you know, we have to bring Islam we're going to bring Islam in Turkey. Really? If you're going to bring Islam in Turkey then change the banking system that is, you know, you think what is going to make Allah happy? That you converted a, a church, a, a former church into a masjid. That's going to make Allah happy? Or the fact that you got rid of riba. You think Allah cares you turned a church into a masjid when your financial system is based upon what Allah has declared a war against? Are you joking? So let us be very clear here that nothing about that, nothing from the missionary work of this stupid David Wood that I was talking about, that his, you know, how the Christians are going to react to this, how it gives them, if how Islamophobia is going to go on the rise. Masjids are in a greater threat throughout the world, especially where Muslims are living as minority. You know, Al-Aqsa is on a greater threat now, right? Because the, the, the propaganda machines now have something to say. Propaganda machines have something now to say, okay? And so, 
Now, and, and this is the point. In all of the fiqh books, all of the fiqh books, all of the fiqh books where it talks about lands, Muslims, where Muslims conquered, if there is, and first of all, first of all, if you read very carefully be, between the lines, like I've already talked about, it's only talking about the garrison cities. But, for any reason, you don't agree with that. Okay, you don't agree with that. All the fiqh books talk about huddimah. You have to bring down the church and then bring something up. You know, because it is far most distasteful, far more uh, oppressive, far more demeaning, far more taunting that you actually take the church and convert it into a masjid. You took theirs and made it into your own. When they didn't want you to do it, they didn't give you permission to do that. And so, it is very, very important to keep in mind that if someone is serious about Islam, then first bring Islam. You know, don't worry about a church that has been converted into and converted into a masjid when you already have a masjid in Turkey. If anyone's ever been there, they have a masjid in every corner. They have they have so many big masjids in that uh, that the 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 blue mosque is just around the corner from there. You don't need that, but you want to do that just to make a political statement, just to make a political statement, only to win your elections, only to win your elections. And so now. People, because they don't have the information, because Muslims have also been brainwashed to think that Al-Aqsa is where the temple was. Muslims themselves don't know, and they themselves accept that, Al that Al-Aqsa is not where the temple was. Okay, And that is in congruency with what Umar radiallahu anh did. And now you are going, now when the non-Muslims are looking, they're saying, these people are always shouting at us that we're disrespecting them. Look at them. They, they shout at us that we make pictures of the Prophet wasallam, right? They make pictures of the Prophet, we get angry, right? We have the, we have the right to get angry, but we can take their, their churches and convert it into a masjid. Do you see that how this is against fitrah? Do you see how this is against human nature? This does not add up. This makes Islam look very, very negative and very, very bad. And, you know, but some people are more interested for the cause of Muslims. And want, are more interested in the cause of power, and less interested in the cause of Allah, and less interested in the cause of Islam. Aqulu qawli hadha astaghfirullahi wa lakum, wa lisa'il muslimina, wa lmuslimat, as-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi.